Hello everyone, how are you today? We're going to be using a couple of the fall stencil sets today. Now I'm going to be doing this one. Isn't this fun? Welcome to the nut house. <laughs> and we've got acorns um, on here as well. You can see that they're sort of in a round, oops, there we go, roundish shape. That's because I'm going to be using a round board, but like a door sign or something like that. Now, my round is not quite large enough for the, um, and this is one I did earlier, it's on the reverse side. So what I'm going to do is actually just do the reverse of this. Oh, I'm hoping I brought a pencil. I, oh, I did. That's gonna remind me I need to mark some spots here where I did this one last time, where I'm gonna drill the holes to hang a rope or something, because I want it exactly in the right spot to make this centered. I don't wanna have this this side and then sort of flip it and then you know not be able to hang it straight. So. Okay, let me show you. I'm going to be doing that one, which is actually called Welcome to the Nut House. The, you know, thrift store signs. This, in fact, was another thrift store find. I found a set of these and they called them the little label. Look, you can sort of see that. See that round circle on there? That's where the label was and it was, it called them placemats. So these were placemats and they're quite nice, solid feeling wood. So this top part was grey and so I've just gone over that with another essential stencil and created a, a winter themed. So this could be a double sided sign, we've got sort of a fall theme with the nuts going on. Which could, This could literally be a year round sign, couldn't it? Welcome to the nut house. <laughs> I think it's funny. It could be a year round sign. So anyway, you can just then flip it over from one to the other. Okay, I'm gonna drag this. It's quite a dry brush, and I've got my offload cardboard here in case I do need to use this. Just to just offload a bit more of that paint. I was using it to paint the background of a sign earlier. I'm just gonna drag that across. Oop, there we go, it's starting to drag. Just create a bit more of a, a white background. away from that little spot. So hopefully we will do this all over. I'm having to press a little bit more now. If you find that you're having to press a little bit more, it might be time to add a bit more paint on the brush. We're creating a bit of a, a dry brush effect. This, because we're doing it this way, it will dry very quickly. Instead of putting more paint on my brush, I'm just pressing a little harder with what we've got smooshed in those bristles. I know I can get some more out of it. So that's a bit of a dry brush method. And I'm going to hit those ends even more. Not ends. Circumference of the circle. Welcome to the nut house. Now, I said before, this is, so I'll give you the measurements of the sign. It's an eight by 16 inch stencil. Oh, and there's a 16 by nine inch stencil. So the other part of it is the, the nuts. Are they hazelnuts or acorns? I think they're acorns. Um, all right, so what usually would happen, because I've got a, a 12, or I think this is a 13 inch round. Um, it's a slightly different size. It's a smaller size round than what we've got for our nut house. So normally you would have your round going like this. Can you see that? Basically, you would have it going like this on a round board. But mine is not going to fit. Um, obviously my nuts go around the outside of here. If I put it in the center, they would come out here. But I don't mind that, and if we put our nut house here, I'll be missing the W and I'd be missing something here. So what I did think of for this particular sign, because this feels fairly central, it's just got the nut on this side, so you could do it either way. 
but I'm going to put it in the center just like so and this way because I've measured and sort of put dots where I'm going to have those drill holes I just need to make it sort of in the center there I could really get the measuring tape out and see like which is the nearest end here it's around about three inches that side so welcome to the nut house look it wouldn't matter if it was crooked with a sign name like that would it welcome to the nut house really and then I'm going to just sprinkle some of these nuts either side of this design so we could make a few just kind of randomly there so let's get started with our with our actual sign part and again here we could go a bit of tape on either side just to make sure that our stencil doesn't move anywhere just going to dab a little bit of the black paint onto the brush and you'll see that there's a little bit too much on the brush it's kind of got a bit of there so I'm just wiping that excess off and now I'm going to just work a bit into the bristles of the brush so all right so now we're going to just do a nice swirling method because I've got hardly any paint on my brush I can swirl and not get it bleeding underneath the stencil so that's a good thing we don't want it to sort of bleed under you can always go back and dip your paintbrush in to get more paint on the brush but it's a little bit harder to take it off the stencil once you if you put too much on and it sort of bleeds all under those stencil lines so the key to getting a nice crisp edges on your stencils is having hardly any paint on your brush and I know some of you will be tempted to just have a little bit too much on and think oh it's okay it looks like I've hardly got any on but if you're still getting that bleeding underneath if you're still getting fuzzy edges on your stencils just that would be your key offload even more so it really has to be fairly dry brush so you've hardly got any paint on it and sometimes it depends a bit on the surface more on the brush this time so we can go a little bit further but like I always say it's easier to add more on very hard to take it off once you put too much on and it's created fuzzy edges you'll be sitting there with a little bit of sandpaper trying to sand or make your edges fuzzy edges all straight so and crisp lines. I'll show you those a little bit closer so you can see. So you can see that nice crisp lines because we have offloaded the brush as much as we can. This is my, if you're wondering what this tape is earlier we just made a straight line so that I could see because we've got something on the back side I wanted to make it all even so that when it hangs it's going to hang straight. That's the idea anyway. All right before I go on to the next part which is going to be adding some of these nuts. Now remember this is made for a round and you could do that on one side and have the words on the other but I've decided to, oh that would be correct too, you would have this, this is mainly the straight line if you were doing this on a round it would be the nuts on this side. I think I showed you before it on this side but that would make sense because this is kind of straight line to have it on that side but I'm doing it in the center and we're going to throw some nuts down on that in just a minute. So here we go with the nut house stencil again while that one's hardening a little bit more and so we're going to add some of these now I did bring a couple of fusion colors to the party today I've got chocolate which is a dark brown so that could be good for the nuts because I didn't want to go too close to a light brown uh, just because of the background we don't want it we want it to stand out there's also this color carriage house which is a nice green might be good for the leaves so let me try the chocolate brown and I'll use a different stencil brush now these um, nuts are actually just the outline so it's not like we're filling it all in or anything let me find a few because I'm not doing this as a round per se I'm just throwing a few things on here I wanted to find an area where I could fit three of the nuts on go back this way there's three right there <coughs> you could do some this side some the other side and then these little round dots as well I'm not sure what to do with them 
I wouldn't have to, I could tape them off, you know, I could just tape off and do a few. This one looks like a little nut with handles on it. <laughs> if, I do, if, you do, if you take them away from the rest of the scene, that's funny. Look guys, we could just play around like this forever. Oh, I see, look, we've got three coming in here. Why don't we just do those? So what I'm going to do is actually just go on the acorn. I'm going to leave those little dots out for now and we're just creating a fun little decoration. I wonder if we had some other kind of nuts here too. Trying not to get that stencil right beside me. If you're worried about getting the, the design right beside it, just tape it off with a little bit of tape. You can do that. Oops, a little bit there. So there's one. It, you can't tell a lot of difference between the black here and the and the chocolate brown colour. But we are giving it a go. And here again, another one. And I'm just going to add a bit of tape right here to show you so that we don't accidentally get that. And then we'll do that with the leaf here. Using this little, another half inch brush, just a bit of a dip in there. Offloading that again on my board. At some stage. So we're gonna pop a leaf right in here. Using this green, and it's called carriage green. Let's see how that turns out against. It's just a matter of having a little try of what's going to turn out nicely against the light coloured wood in the background there. It is a nice shade of green. It's almost like a bit of a vintage green. It does remind me a bit of an olive you know the green olives? It's kind of that green olive colour. That, yeah, that turned out nicely. You can see the green in there. And then you can sort of see a bit of a difference now between the black and then the brown of the nuts. So let's add a second leaf maybe down here. We could even have a leaf. You could even use the same leaf, you know, because it has kind of got less to wash, right? I might even just do this one coming off the edge of the page. Page. You know what I meant, didn't you? The board. So coming off the edge of the board here, a little leaf. Like it's coming off the board there. I feel like we could do the same down here. Um, right up there. Now I didn't add any paint to my brush then, just to have a look and see if I might have enough on there. Looks like I might. Maybe just a tad more. That looks just nicely spaced out enough that we've got the three nuts that side and then we can go ahead and do the nuts on this side. So see how I did the nuts first, I feel like the leaves were an add-on, like a little bit of an embellishment to the nut idea. So now that we've got that sorted, we can do a similar thing on the other page, on the other page, <laughs> the other side. <clears throat> so grabbing our brown again and then we'll do our pumpkin pie sign, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, chocolate this is so fusions dark brown called chocolate they've also got a nice lighter brown which is called woodwick which would be lovely except it's just a little bit lighter and I felt like it might not work on there but you could just do a lot of little transitiony kind of um, colors on these as well you could even fill them in we do have our um, essential stencil also has these artist brushes or we call them sometimes detail brushes and they help to fill in some of these if you want to add some other colours to them, some other shades. I'm just going to go over this here and also, oh, we might need that leaf again. This way. It is. And words and pictures. And so that's how stencils um, are put together. And so sometimes those 
detail brushes are great for just going over and filling in your little stencil lines <coughs> or gaps. Right, let's see where else can we put that. Yeah, uh, some people prefer the bridges open. Some people like that stenciled look. So that, but then others prefer the closed for certain fonts, especially um, to have that closed look. I do like the idea. I love how we can just do these things, and then you guys come up with your own additions like doing the metallic or adding some extra colour to these acorns. Alright, so that's that. Grab our green brush again. Carriage house this is called. That was a bit quicker to do. I probably had just the perfect amount on the brush that time. Yeah, I like that. So I've got my tape up here that's kind of taped so that we can tell uh, whether there's a straight line going on there or not. And I may go ahead and do some more on this afterwards, but that gives you a great idea of the fun I'm here for. Welcome to the Nut House. I could probably take my tape off now, which was kind of just keeping me in line. It was keeping me straight because what I did was, if you missed that earlier, I did this another time on a different live and I've got this line across here person in the comments suggested I do a big piece of tape there and make it go around the sides so I could make sure that this is the same uh, direction because if we want if this was like this and then the other side made it go crooked that would not be a fun thing. So now I've got some little drill lines where I can make my holes hang a string on there and hang that up. So there we've got the green leaves, the brown you could add some other bling to that to make it look special only at this stage. Save 10% on the bundle of all of the, the fall designs that these are a part of, or you can buy them singly. So that's, let me see, I'll just have a little look and you can follow me at I Restore Stuff on all of the platforms, all the social medias, wherever you hang out, that's where I'll probably end too at iRestore Stuff. Welcome to the Nut House is what we did today. Real thanks guys so much for watching today and I'll see you again next week on Essential Stencil ready for another DIY live. Enjoy.